This week on Sportsman TV, catfishing at Toledo Bend. I don't think so. We're actually with Captain Steven Johnson this week. We're chasing deep water summertime crappie fishing here on Toledo Bend. Stick with us. You know, early in the morning, these, these crop you get right on top of that brush and, and feed. Oh, okay. And as the, they mainly feed on shad. Yeah, we're, we're early summer here at Toledo. And what they do when they first come off the grass, they're, they're just getting through spawning. So when they, they come off the grass, they, they, they come out here the first edge of the drop. And we're sitting in about 25 foot of water um, fishing on the top of some brush piles. And the fish are, they're really about 12 to 13 foot deep right on, right on top of the brush. Um, the spawn usually starts about the 1st of February, weather permitting, and then as it'll keep going until about the middle of April, and then they'll start moving out here a little bit deeper. That's what I'm talking about. It's so good the man got a <laughs> counter so he can keep up with them. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Number four. Do you fish for them year round? Yeah, well, most of the time we start we start about the middle of April. We can catch them real good in February and March, but it's weather permitting. Weather is, is so critical on the crappie. A bass here, you can make a bass bite, but once that water gets back down in the in the high 50s, the crappie just will not bite. Really? Yeah, they when they're up there shallow spawning, it's really hard. And that's why we try not to book any crappie trips to about the middle of April. The water gets, you know, by then it's the mid 60s and it's, and it's wide open, it's good to go. And one thing too, a lot of times it's a little bit harder for the kids to, to fish when you're casting farm on the grass. Right. And that's what's so good this time of year. You know, you can drop a jig down on the brush and then you can also, we're gonna minnow fish here in a little bit and then using the minnows with the slip carts, it's it's action, got little push buttons, it's, it's just old school good fishing. Right. Like how big do they get on Toledo? Um, you'll catch a few three pounders. Really? Yes sir, and, and honestly when we catch them like that, you know, if somebody wants to mount one, um, I, you know, I don't mind at all somebody mount one, but once they, once they get that big, then um, we try to just, you know, um, let, them, let them go. Like let that's get, a throwback. Let them, let them get down there and make some babies. Yes sir. You don't have to say yes. <laughs> This is Ryan Terrier. I'm here at Bowie Outfitters and listen, I'm an avid bow hunter. If you're looking for a place with the best service in the south and wonderful accessories, not to mention a top of the line bow range, Bowie Outfitters is a place for you. A wonderful staff here and great service at Bowie, but an awesome selection of guns. We have pistols, rifles, and shotguns and everything else you could imagine. And for all those hard to find bass fishing and inshore products, Bowie Outfitters is a place for you. That's Bowie Outfitters for everything outdoors in between Essen and Blue Bonnet on Perkins Road. Don't just be a sportsman, look like one too. Men, women, kids, everyone wants to look like a good sport. And now you can find it all in one place without leaving the house. Our popular sportsman logo clothing and accessories are just a click away at louisianasportsman.com. T-shirts, caps, polarized sunglasses, jewelry, koozies, and more are available in a variety of sizes and colors. It's easy to show the world that you are a sportsman. Visit shop.louisianasportsman.com today and get that perfect sportsman item for yourself or as a gift for that sportsman in your life. 
For camping, fishing, hunting, or anything outdoors, bring along Arctic Ice. Simply freeze these versatile cooler packs and they're ready to keep your food and drinks cold throughout your outing. Arctic Ice can maintain in a cooler 60% longer than the equal weight of regular ice and with no more mess or soggy food. Arctic Ice is clean and easy. Alaskan series can maintain a sub 40 degree cooler for days and the Tundra series can keep game frozen till it gets home. Preserve an Arctic refuge in your cooler. Choose Arctic Ice. And what you're trying to do is you're just trying to to build a spot, not for the fish. You're trying to build a build a pile for the shad, for the shad to group up. And and what that does when the shad group up, that's that's what brings a fish. A lot of people think you're building a pile for the fish, but you're really just building a pile for, you the, know, bait for, for the bait to get around. And it'll just concentrate the bait. And and in most most you know down here you know in the south, um, Louisiana you know it gets hot, so you want to try to get. Not in the deepest part, but you at least want to try to get 22 feet and deeper. That's a nice one. Nice one. Nice one. <laughs> that man got to hit his clicker. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I'm catching so many, you got to click them. Dang, they jumping now. <laughs> That old tutti fruity right there in the right there in the top of the head. Are there any times when they won't bite artificial when you have to go to live bait? Yeah, a lot of times if you get a morning where it's where it's dead slick and it's and it's it's calm, um, they'll get a little bit more finicky. And because um, what they'll do, they'll just sit down there on top of the brush and just and just won't feed. And once you get a couple of them feeding and get them excited, then they'll come up and and um, and get to eat. Fire them up. Fire them Fire up. Fire the whole school. Uh, and what we talked about earlier, what I do is I, I try to catch, I try to catch ten off a of, off a pile, and 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 go to another pile. And what that does, that just kind of leaves a party going there. And that'll attract. And more, that'll attract uh, more. Yeah, a lot of people they'll 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 build a brush pile and they'll sit there and just and, and burn it. and burn it and mm -hmm. and you can you know people say oh, you can't fish something out but. The way I look at it, if you leave a party going, the right. next morning when you get back out there, there'll be another party happening. Well, they're pretty ones too. Healthy. Dermot, here's a, that one Greg just caught, that's a black crappie. And this is this is a white crappie. You can tell by their lateral lines on them, and their and their mouths. On a white crappie, the mouths are quite a bit bigger than on a, on a black crappie. The white crappie were native. They were in the river when they flooded it. And the black crappie, the um, um, Louisiana and Texas Parks and Wildlife stocked the black crappie. And the black crappie are more aggressive, and they grow they grow faster. Which one gets the biggest? Um, the white crappie gets longest. They get longer, but the black crappie get they get heavier. Heavier. Yes, sir. Okay, here on Toledo Bend today, we crappie fished on brush tops. And what we try to do is you try to put your bait on top of the brush pile, not down in the brush pile or on the side of the brush pile. So what I like to use is slip carks. And what the slip cart does is it allows you to set the right depth so your minnow will not get in the brush pile. And you can also use it on jigs. We use it on jigs when we're fishing shallow in the spring. But today, on today's show, we mainly used it on the brush piles. And when I'm saying slip cart, what, what you do, you can buy these little, just about any local tackle shop. It comes in a pack, you know, 15 to 25. And what this little tube does is you just slide it on your line and you, you pull it off to the depth you want. So today we're fishing about 14 foot. So you just, you just count it off and pull 14 feet out. And then what you do is you slide 
this little string off this piece of tubing here. You slide it off the tubing onto your string, onto your mono. And then you take both ends of this and pull it as tight as you can get it. And what I like to do is wrap around my finger and get it tight. Try to get it as tight as you can. And then you get your pair of scissors and you cut the excess off. And this is what leaves it right here. And then what you do, you pull, you go back to you to your end of your line. And then you take, it comes with the with a little bead, and you run your bead on it. And what the bead will do is the bead will be between your cork and your bobber stopper. And all this is is just a little safety. You know, so if your cart does, you know, get up on your bobber stopper, it will not slide through. Put your mono through the bead and, and, and take your slip cork, it has to be a slip cork, and run your slip cork in. And then you just put your, we just used a, a two alt Aberdeen hook, and then I use a 3 16 what I call a, just a, a smash on weight. It's got two ears on it. Now smash your ears over on your mono. And what this will do is, when you wind up, the bobber stopper will wind into your reel. Now on a lot of your push button reels, your spinning reels are fine, but on some of the push buttons, the bobber stopper will not go in your spools as good. But the, but the Zebco, um, it, it does real good. So what this does, that just winds up inside your reel. So when you drop, when you get on top of the brush pile, you can drop your bait, and then the cork will slide down to 14 feet, and it will hold that, it'll hold the cork on top of the brush. And that's how we fish today. S11 sunglasses makes it like the water is not even there. For camping, fishing, hunting, or anything outdoors, bring along Arctic Ice. Simply freeze these versatile cooler packs and they're ready to keep your food and drinks cold throughout your outing. Arctic Ice can maintain in a cooler 60% longer than the equal weight of regular ice and with no more mess or soggy food. Arctic Ice is clean and easy. Alaskan series can maintain a sub 40 degree cooler for days and the Tundra series can keep game frozen till it gets home. Preserve an Arctic refuge in your cooler. Choose Arctic Ice. Fishing, it's where good stories come from. It's about good times and family and friends. It's about taking a couple home for dinner tonight and saving a few for tomorrow. It's all about that and so much more. To CCA, fishing is about enjoying today and making sure tomorrow is even better. To us, fishing comes with a responsibility for the resources we enjoy so much. If fishing means all that to you, then you belong with CCA. Louisiana Sportsman Magazine. For over 31 years, your source for fishing and hunting information. Each month you will find stories by local experts on everything from bass to redfish to ducks, deer to trout and turkey. We've got incredible local information that you can use immediately to get more success outdoors. You'll also enjoy monthly columns on cooking, the latest lures, GPS locations, shooting, kayaks, and much more. Have Louisiana Sportsman delivered to your house and safe. $24.99 gets you a full year of Louisiana Sportsman. To order today, visit louisianasportsman.com. Okay, here we are pulling up on one of my brush piles. We're at about 22, 23 foot. And it's, it's a lot of times it's hard to tell because there's so much bait around the piles that it doesn't, you know, a lot of people think you're just going to see a, just a tree standing down there. And what it usually is, there's so much bait around those trees that it just blinds everything out. So you really, honestly, when you're pulling up on a pile, a lot of times people can't find a pile because there's so much bait. So a lot of times you mainly just want to look for those big balls of bait. That's how you find your piles. On the, on the brush piles, um, there's a lot of different stuff to use. Um, we use. We use some bamboo, some cane. Um, we use some sweet gum trees. 
and, and willow trees. And you know, they, they like the leaves, the shad do. Um, Christmas trees are real good. The only, the only problem with Christmas trees, once the Christmas trees dry out, it's real hard to sink the Christmas trees. So, you know, if you do get Christmas trees, um, you have to put them out during these in the end of December and <clears throat> or in January. I told you he was making them out of crappie. He's telling you all that stuff, but I promise you, he's just planting crappie everywhere he goes. <laughs> it's a good Kalita Ben Slav. <laughs> Caught that on that Strike King Wild Shiner. On oh, that Strike King Wild Shiner works every drop. They're just sitting on top of that brush, you know, that jig. It, it, the way I kind of tell it, it's almost like you sitting on your couch and somebody drops a french fry down there in front of you and they just reach over and, and some of them will line jump you if you, if you get Yeah, I had one earlier do that. You get them real aggressive. And the carp fishing is, is real good for the kids. You know, we were talking right. about the kids earlier. You know, a lot of times um, it's hard to get that jig down there and get them a bite. But with the slip carps, you can get it down there and get it the right depth. Another good one. Get in the boat. <laughs> It's a nice one. Nice one. Nice one. And you know what gets me about uh, Toledo this time of the year? You got a million acres to yourself. Yeah, we, we do grow some small ones too here. <laughs> I, I thought at Toledo they all started at about a pound. <laughs> about a pound. <laughs> This is a 16th ounce, just a, just a lead jig head. And this is a Strike King Tutti Frutti um, jig. And what I like to do is, is instead of tying it direct on there, I like tying like a little loop knot in there. And what the loop knot does is, it just gives a little bit more freedom for that jig to, to bounce around when you're sitting right there under the boat shaking it. And what that does is, so when you sit there and shake that jig, it's just not directly tied onto your line. It's got some freedom for that jig to, to bounce around. And a lot of times down here with the boat moving, we get a little ways, all you have to do is just drop it down on the brush and just hold it and honestly not even move it. And the crop will come over. And if they don't, a lot of people want to jerk it up real hard, but really all you're wanting to do is just try to get their attention, just lightly um, lift it up six to eight inches and then drop it and just have a little slack line, just what Greg was doing a while ago when that jig falls. They really like that jig on the fall. This is a yellow bass. Looks like a white bass or a baby striper or a hybrid, but it's actually uh, its own species. Uh, at home, they refer to them as barfish. Uh, bass eat them. People eat them. Coonasses eat them. Everybody eats them. They're good. We're gonna box him with the uh, with the crappie, the white perch, or the sackalay. Just depending on what part of the state you live in. Mainly, you're looking for. For, for stain to clear water. Here on, on Toledo Bend, we've got so much hydrilla that what it does, it really filters that water out. After a big rain, like two nights ago, we, you know, one of those little th storms come through, we had like three and a half inches of rain right here on top of us where we are. And, um, and it, that grass really helps it out. If you get that stained water, the shad really don't have to pile up and that brush is good. But as soon as that water clears back up, if you got it in some kind of um, small bow or some kind of pond that you're fishing in, as soon as the water clears back up, those shad will go right back to that brush, you know, to, to hide in that cover. And it'll, it'll bring them crappie right back in there to it. Oh! I'm gonna start building my brush piles out of crappie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm liking this a lot better than the wooden ones. Hammer hole. That's what the man said when we pulled up here, it was a hammer hole. It looked like hammers to me. That's about 30 minutes of work right there. And people really don't, you know, people come from all over the country, just, you know, just not from Louisiana. People come from, I've got them from Michigan, Rhode Island. Um, a lot of the locals around here really don't realize how good our crappie sockelet fishing is. I mean, these, these fish here never quit growing. They eat year round. And just the size, a lot of people in Missouri and in Oklahoma, they, they just, you know, once you get down here and get your taste of it, you'll have to keep coming. This is world-class crappie fishing. It is, I, I mean. I, I'm, what we're doing right here 
I don't care where you live. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. I mean, and you do this every summer. Every summer. Every yeah. summer. I start, um, we start getting on the brush about the first week of June. They, they come off the grass and they, they, they get on the brush and they'll stay on the brush from now until about the, about the first week of October. It just depends on, once you have one of them big cool fronts, you know, cool, kind of cold, what it'll do, it'll push the bait away from the brush and it really spreads them out then. So I tell everybody, you know, from on the brush pile fishing like this from the 1st of June to about the 1st of October is, 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 the best. Is, is the best, yes sir. Why buoy outfitters? Our customers know why. When you need something, you come in, you ask for it, and you can get it. Great selection of clothes here, guns, shells, calls, whatever you need. I like coming in and doing that. And more importantly for me, I'm a big bow hunter. I think these guys are better than anybody. That's why I come over to Bowie Outfitters. That's Bowie Outfitters. Perkins Road between Essen Lane and Blue Bonnet. Bowie Outfitters for everything outdoors. Sportsman.com is the South's premier hunting and fishing website. Planning a hunting or fishing trip? Visit LouisianaSportsman.com and get up to the date information on weather, tides, or solar data. Our breaking news and continually updating form will keep you up to date. Or visit our report section and ask the locals what's been biting and where. Need to sell or buy an outdoor item? LouisianaSportsman.com's free classifieds are the quickest way for you to reach the outdoor market. LouisianaSportsman.com, the quick way to get the most of the outdoors. Fishing, it's where good stories come from. It's about good times and family and friends. It's about taking a couple home for dinner tonight and saving a few for tomorrow. It's all about that and so much more. To CCA, fishing is about enjoying today and making sure tomorrow is even better. To us, fishing comes with a responsibility for the resources we enjoy so much. If fishing means all that to you, then you belong with CCA. This is the benefit coming up now. Fix to come over the side. There he is. <laughs> Ain't nobody around. Uh-uh. That's two on the same wild shiner. <laughs> huh? <laughs> we always like to ask this on our show. What is your favorite way to eat crappie? Prepare them. Fry. That's what I'm talking about. You know, you know, it, a little fry crappy is not going to hurt you, you know, too much. It's just, there's nothing wrong with baking a redfish or a flounder or something like that, but boy, you get them nice slabs like that. A little, little Louisiana fish fry, some Tony Sassery mixed in there with it. Hard to beat that. Another wild shiner loaded, armed and ready. Uh, do uh, do crappie have a pretty good freezer life? Like you can put them in the freezer and they last? Yeah, what I recommend everybody doing, I bag them, I do all the cleaning, and I put them in Ziploc bags, and then best thing to do is once you get home, is fill those Ziploc bags full of water, and just make sure you get all the air out. And as long as you do that, I mean, they, they, you, keep, they, they, they keep real good. Um, most of the time what I try to do, you know, I always say I try to catch 10 or 12 off each one and leave a party going there when you leave and you can really kind of tell you can look on your electronics and you can see the little worms up on top of the brush feeding and like the last spot we just left we pulled up air hack dropped out you know had quite a few doubles and, and a lot of bites and all of a sudden it just quit so um you just pull off of that and go to another one and a lot of it is wind direction you know those when you get that slick it pushes that bait it keeps that bait around the piles and when you get wind um and you know, a little clouds mixed in, it, it, that bait, you know, spreads out a little bit more. So it's, it was just opposite what you would ever think. You want it dead slick and big sun, and that's, a, that's the best time for the brush, top, brush, brush pile fishing. Finally. It's been five minutes since you caught one there. Well, I know. It ain't because they ain't been biting me. <laughs> They've been kind of.
calling the specs. A specs. Cust yeah, a customer called here a couple years ago, wanted to go spec fishing. I said, well, I'm sorry, sir. I said, um, I said all I do is um, freshwater fish. He said, well, you don't spec fish? I said, um, no, sir. And um, after a few minutes of talking, um, realized that he was talking about soccer He just called them specs over in Florida. But <laughs> it is the filet mignon of the freshwater world. Now that's the other cool thing about staying at Toledo. Depending on what end of the lake is most accessible for you, uh, you know, we're on the southern end of the lake, which honestly is my favorite end to fish on. I like to stay south of the Pendleton Bridge, and not so much for the crappie fishing. I'm, now I'm learning about that, but the deal is that's the part of the lake that normally has the vegetation in it, and I just like to fish vegetation. As um, far as places to stay, both sides of the lake, Texas and Louisiana, one end to the other. I mean, if you, you, you know, it's easy. You call Steven, I, I'm sure he can recommend a place for you to stay, um, but there's just tons of places to stay depending on where you're coming from. A great place to go for a vacation because especially like now in the summertime, everything is just so laid back and you know, in the springtime here, all these places are really busy. A lot of bass tournaments here in the spring, a lot of bass fishermen come here in the spring because you know, the spring bass fishing is so good, but man, I, I really think I'm like in the summer a lot better just because I mean, you basically got hundreds of thousands of acres to yourself to fish. Fish in the morning, come here with Stephen, fish in the morning, swim in the afternoon. I mean, you know, a lot of sights to see up and down the lake and, and such a scenic place too. Ending our trip here at Toledo with some full Ziplocs. Join us here next time. On